Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is March 7th. This is my weekly shop update. So I have a few things this week. We're going to take a look at a little bit of an update on the bed project. We're going to look at some um, milling I've been doing outside in the sawmill. I have a new plane in the shop and we'll also take a look at some viewer projects. So I think let's start outside and take a look at the mill. So I got out here yesterday and I started cutting up uh, this ash log. And I was planning on coming out here again today to finish it up, but uh, it's been really windy all day, and uh, wind isn't all that great for acoustics, so I decided to stay inside and do some editing today. But hopefully, if the weather's a little bit better tomorrow, I can finish up this log and move on to the next one. So far, I've already pulled uh, what, four slabs off of this one, and I'm cutting those ones at 10 quarter. Um, so this log is gonna yield probably, I'm guessing, nine 10 quarter slabs. And there's a lot of really nice figure in here, so let me give you a little bit of a preview. Got some nice rainwater here. Let's see. Woo! Oh, that's cold. That's ice. <laughs> um, oh, that's cold. That is so cold. Ah. Oh. Woo. It's not as warm out here as it looks, and that was ice water. Okay, so this tree has a few things going on. It has three limbs up here, so you have a three-way crotch. So we have these awesome two, uh, well, this, is a, this was more of a bark inclusion, but you have two feathers, two crotch feathers coming through here. And then down here, there used to be a limb right here, so you have the crotch from that. And then you have the crotch figure from this big limb over here as well. There's a lot of things going on. So even down here, there's a few more limbs down here. So we'll see some more crotch figure as we get further down through the log. But I am guessing that either this one or the next one is going to be uh, the best looking. So over here I have a few logs left. I have the larger maple crotch, the larger, larger piece of ash, and I have this piece of white oak. I think it's about 36 inches in diameter. What I'm planning to do is work through the few small ones I have down here. I have these couple pieces of spruce, then I'll do the white oak, and then I'll do either one of these two first because I'm going to do my stacks over here. So I'll be stacking this big ash log over here somewhere and I'll stack the logs on the mill right now on top of that one. And the same thing with that crotch. So I'm trying to free up some space and get through everything. But so far it's been going really well and uh, that's about it I guess. It's freezing now. Now the wind's picking up again. So this week I got this guy, the Logal Jack plane from Lee Nielsen. Um, a lot of people like this thing and I've heard a lot of good things about it. I have never actually used one and I wanted to get one for the shop just to give it a little bit of a try so I can form my own opinion about it to see if I like it or not. So I've had it for a day, I've only used it for a few test shavings and that's about it. It does perform you know, pretty well the box. The blade is just about ready to go. I haven't sharpened it yet, but it is cutting you know, fairly well. Uh, one thing that kind of, I've held these before at shows. I haven't really, I didn't really use them at the shows at, the, at like the, um, the Lee Nielsen booth. But the oddest thing about this is when you hold a bevel up plane for the first time and you're used to holding a bevel down plane, this feels so foreign because on, your, on the tote, your hand's just kind of floating out there in free space. I'm so used to holding the tote and my hand being behind the frog. I rust my index finger up on the frog so I'm used to this gripping position. Well, you can't really do that with a bevel up plane. There's nowhere to put your finger. <laughs> the other thing with this too, is with the bevel down planes, I can spin the, um, the depth adjuster without taking my hand off. I can do it one handed. So I can turn it with my index or my, my ring finger or my middle finger. And I don't have to worry about you know, grabbing with my hand. On this bevel up plane, I can't really, I can't really reach down there that well because it's so low. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. But the nice thing about the bevel up planes is its versatility. So the plane blade itself, there's no chip breaker, so it's one less thing to worry about. And the idea here is that you can have more than one blade like this, sharpened at different angles for different tasks and you can only have one plane essentially instead of having a bunch of them. So with the bevel up plane, whatever angle you put on the blade is going to be what's going to be cutting the wood. It's not a fixed angle like a standard bevel down plane. 
bevel down plane doesn't matter what angle you put on the bevel, it's always going to be cutting at the same angle, which is the angle of the frog. Now there's ways to change that. You can put a back bevel on there, but that's a little bit beyond the scope here. So by default, this is sharpened at a fairly low angle, and lower angles are better for end grain. I've heard some people say that the only way to get good end grain shavings is to use a bevel up plane. So, <laughs> let's do a little test, I guess. As you can see, I've already done this quite a few times. So I've got my jointer plane. This is a number eight. It has a, um, a Veritas blade in it. And we'll see if this can cut end grain. This is two inches wide. So, you know, fairly wispy end grain shavings there. And now I gotta reset this thing, I'm sure, because it's probably all changed. Let me see. Yeah. So pretty good. Surface finish is not as good. You can see some track marks in there. But again, this is out of the box. I haven't sharpened this at all at this point. All right, I gave it a few passes on my strop. So let's see what that did. Pretty good. A little bit better. So I'll keep playing with this here in the shop. We'll see how that goes. There's a lot of versatility here, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. So a little bit of an update on the bed project. I got the post stock all roughly squared up. These are sitting at about five by five right now. I'm gonna let them sit again, let them de-stress, and then I'll mill them again finally. Um, I'll probably end up around four and three quarters square. And then the really interesting thing here is that I still have a lot of bark here. Well, these are a little bit long too, but I think what's left with the bark is gonna be kind of indicative of the curvature or the the shape I'm going to do to the posts. Um, I don't want the bark to be on there in the finished piece, so if I can kind of incorporate a curve or some kind of um, shaping to the post that kind of incorporates the, the curve here, the, the sweeping whatever, this shape <laughs> into that final piece, I think this will end up happening. So it's, it's kind of cool. Kind of let the wood decide what shape it wants to be. <laughs> So let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a walnut natural edge bench by BJ. This bench was made from an old walnut tree that fell over in the front yard of his family home, which was built in 1850. The tree wasn't as old as the house, but it was estimated to be over 100 years old. He ripped the boards using a chainsaw and had bow tie inlays and colored epoxy to stabilize a large crack. And most interestingly, as he was resawing some of the wood, he found a bullet in the tree. Next is a walnut box by Earl. This was the first box he built, and the walnut originated from his great-grandfather's farm and was milled down by his grandfather almost 20 years ago. He used purple heart and African blackwood as the miter splines, and rare earth magnets keep the lids secured. Next is the butcher block by Anthony. The block is made from maple and cherry, and you can find more of Anthony's work over on Instagram and his YouTube channel. Last this week is a chaotic chessboard by Will. The board is made from walnut, cherry, maple, and ash, and was a Christmas gift for his uncle as a thank you for giving him all the material. You can find more of Will's work over on Instagram, and as always, there'll be links to all that stuff in the description. So my friends over at Trident have put together a bit of a competition. They have a thing going where if you build a project and submit some plans for that project, you can win some pretty sweet prizes, like uh, the full work center package, or every single Triton tool that they make, which is a pretty cool one. And I'll also be picking one of the entries to build myself. So that could be a good prize for you if that's something you want to see. What should Matt build? Let's build something and have Matt build it too. <laughs> so I'll have a link to the details for that down in the description below. And another thing I want to let you know about, another little contest thing. 
over at the woodworking subreddit. They have a contest over there. Um, last year, Matt Kenny from Fine Woodworking built 52 boxes in 52 weeks. And the, uh, the contest of the competition is to build one of the boxes that Matt built, and then you could possibly win some prizes from Fine Woodworking. I'll leave a link to that below. And if you don't already, check out the subreddit for the woodworking subreddit. Totally should. Great community. Um, great community. A lot of cool stuff over there. So check that stuff out. I think that's about all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. Happy working.